Welcome back. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com, and on youtube.com forward slash channels web. Log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS, and Windows devices from their respective stores. The Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You'll also have access to the eyewitness feature with which you can share pictures, videos, or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, tap, swipe to reveal the menu, and follow the instructions. Let's turn our attention to Katsina State now. Irrigation farmers across seven local government areas there are being empowered with fertilizers, agrochemicals, and mud-efficient cook stoves as part of efforts to tackle desertification. Officials of the state's Ministry of Environment are appealing to farmers to utilize the state's partnership with the EU to improve farming activity and other initiatives to control drought and desertification. Drought and desertification are the most devastating environmental problems affecting states in northern Nigeria. The federal government, in collaboration with donor countries, international organizations and other institutions, has made several attempts to combat the problem through the National Action Plan, which was later fused into the National Policy on Environment. In Kassina State, in the north, irrigation farmers are given incentives distributed by the European Union with support from international charity organizations. Each farmer will get a bag of fertilizer, a cook stove, a bottle of insecticide and a watering can, which I believe they will utilize this um, input for their farming practices as well as uh, the other uh, drought control activity. So it's very encouraging. So I call on our farmers that they should give all the necessary cooperation to this program. The program, which is aimed at tackling desertification, is part of the EU-sponsored initiatives to get sustainable energy in the Sahel region. We expect that at the end of the day, farmers would use it effectively. The issue is about sustainability, um, uh, afforestation. It's also about helping the rural populace to fight the negative effect of the climate change and also to uh, help control the environment. By paraventure also improved the income of the rural populace and the livelihood. One of the beneficiaries who spoke in a local language hopes to expand his farming capacity. I feel so honored for being a beneficiary of the fertilizer, agrochemical, and the more efficient clean cook stoves as they will improve my production and family life. I'm going to put these materials to use right away for better results. The sponsors are optimistic that the intervention will help fight desertification, soil erosion, and other environmental degradation to improve the lives of the locals. Internally displaced persons at the International Christian <laughs> Center in Ovia, northeast local government area of Edo State, seems to be mounting due to the dwindling supply of relief materials, especially food from donors. The overseer of the camp, Forlorn Shaw Solomon, while receiving various food and learning items brought by the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons added that lately events like this have been few and far between. Sheer delight in the air, the mood at the International Christian Center in Uogwa, Ovia Northeast local government area of Edo State. The obvious reason is the sight of these food items and learning materials. Owing to the insurgency in the northeast of Nigeria, this facility has been home to thousands of displaced persons from that area. The National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, NCFRMI, has come with its own contribution towards the welfare of the center. We have before us children who were separated from their parents and now are classified as unaccompanied IDP's children. So we are here 
to show them love and to give them hope and demonstrate our unalloyed support that will continue to keep them going until their home is safe and they are returned in dignity. Beyond the joyous atmosphere, however, there is a reality check. The overseer of the yes, center, Folorin Shaw Suleiman, says subsistence farming is now a necessity in the face of dwindling supplies from benefactors. I had to go to farm. You know, with them, we have to learn to plant corn and plant. But despite all the effort, it just didn't go anywhere. Now, if you have rice alone and oil, and you cook that for the children, you know, that causes another thing. So we have to try to balance it, find other things to... So I'm appealing to everybody. They should not be tired of the IDPs. I'm not only appealing for those that are here, but those that are everywhere in Nigeria. The strong appeal is meant for the relevant authorities and well-meaning individuals to come to the rescue, as although they've survived insurgency, the more than 3,000 internally displaced persons here now face a daunting battle against starvation. From the south-south to the north-central and the health sector in particular, the 2018 measles immunization campaign has been flagged off in Kwara State with an appeal from Governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed to, to parents and caregivers to make their children available for vaccination. According to the governor, parents should not deprive their children of a healthy life on the basis of cultural and religious beliefs, as Nigeria is still high up on the list of countries with poor measles vaccination. The governor of Kwara State, Abdul Fakhtar Ahmed, arrived in the General Hospital in Inori, the state capital, to flag off this year's measles vaccination campaign. <laughs> Top government functionaries, the World Health Organization team, community health practitioners, traditional rulers, amongst others, are present here. He has committed himself so much to, this. to set the ball rolling, the permanent secretary in the state Ministry of Health assures residents of the government's commitment to curb the spread of the disease. Misus is one of the most infectious and most deadly diseases. It is preventable, and that is the consolation we all have. This particular disease, as dangerous as it is, it can be prevented through vaccinations. And that is why today the government is not leaving any stone or turn to ensure that we prevent what is preventable. This position is supported by the governor, who says there are plans in place to reduce the burden. Measles is a highly contagious disease and one of the leading causes of death in young children. Indeed, statistics from the World Health Organization indicate that in 2016, there were 89,780 measles deaths globally. Measles vaccination resulted in an 84% drop in measles death and prevented an estimated 20.4 million deaths, making measles vaccine one of the best investments in public health. While thanking the state governor for his commitment to reducing the spread of this disease, the state director of the World Health Organization believes the cordial relationship between both parties is already yielding fruit. The country is organizing the measles campaign beginning from October last year to March. What I said, the participating in the March, we all started by March 1st. I want to say that we want to appreciate the effort of His Excellency for promptly releasing the counterpart form for personally flagging of the ceremony himself, which is a very exemplary leadership for our local government chairman. And we want to actually appreciate him for maintaining the polio virus in Kuala State. Measles is one of the leading causes of death in children. Experts say immunization remains the most reliable way of stamping out the disease. A security summit holds in Kaduna State that's coming up on News Across Nigeria.